Hello everyone. In this two-part video tutorial, we're going to first show you how to make a seamless brush-on glove mold using the Rebound 25 to create the actual mold. And then we're going to show you in the second half how to create a lightweight epoxy shell using the Epoximite 102. Now, the main objective for our project today is to create an impact-resistant prop helmet that we don't have to worry about breaking in case we drop it. And for that, we're going to be using the Smoothcast 57D. So let's take a look on how it's done. For this project, we decided to use this 3D printed Iron Man helmet that we coated with the XTC 3D to give its final appearance that you see here. But as you can see at the bottom of the helmet, it is not just a flat edge. It has a step built into it. And we got to address that before we start actually making the mold. We're going to build this up on a bed of clay. And for that, I'm simply going to outline the helmet and going to start building up a clay bed using the Sculptix uh, Soft. This is a oil-based clay that is sulfur-free and it will not inhibit platinum silicones. Now once that is built up, we can test fit it and with a little bit of uh, maneuvering and trimming, we can then simply position the helmet on top of this bed clay and then we're going to go around the perimeter and close any of the holes that are still showing between our model and a clay layup. Uh, one more visual inspection, everything looks good. And I'm going to put uh, some sonite wax on that working surface, the, the board itself, to make sure that the silicone does not stick to that. It is a porous wood surface, and we want to make sure that that is sealed. Now, for the silicone that we're going to be using, this is called Rebound 25. It's a brush-on silicone rubber. It's a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume, and we don't have to use a gram scale. But what we have to do is a premix. You always want to premix these materials before you start using them. And now I'm going to simply mark my dispensing cups with a marker and go ahead and dispense the part A and part B. And then we can combine them in a clean mixing container. Now when you're mixing these products, you always want to make sure you do a thorough mixing uh, by scraping the bottom of the mixing container, scrape the sides, and repeat this until you get a solid one color. There's no striation, no streaking. Now, once the material is mixed, we can start applying it to the mold. Uh, this is called a stipple coat. Uh, we're trying to capture all the detail in our model. And uh, we're basically not building up a thickness. Uh, we're not trying to thicken the rubber at this point. We're just building up a thin layer to capture the detail. And once we have the model covered, we can proceed to uh, covering the working surface with a layer of silicone as well. Uh, one visual inspection here, make sure everything is covered. We're now going to allow this material a partial cure for about 60 minutes before proceeding on to the next step. Now, if you're not sure what a partial cure is, you can always do the finger test. Uh, take your glove and press somewhere on a mold that is unimportant. And if the silicone comes off on your glove, then you're not ready. You're not there yet. Let it sit for a little bit longer. If the silicone doesn't come off on your glove, but it's still tacky, we're ready for the second layer. Now, in the second layer, we're going to dispense the material again, uh, but this time we're pigmenting the uh, material with some silk pig blue. This is going to help us to distinguish to uh, the different layers that we're applying and assure a thorough coverage of the entire piece. And then we can uh, simply go ahead and apply that silicone to the entire uh, mold surface. The material is now allowed a partial cure for 60 minutes before moving on to the next step. So you can see for this next layer that I'm dispensing more material than we did in the first two. Um, this is simply with the thought that we're going to be making some keys. Now once the material is mixed up, we can simply pour it into these little shot glasses. And then we're going to use the uh, aluminum channel here that I'm going to plug with some of that same clay, the Sculptex clay. And then we're going to pour the silicone into that channel. 
Notice that I uh, wrote platinum silicone only on that channel. You want to make sure you distinguish the different tools that you use for different materials so that you don't end up with an inhibition down the line in your mold. The keys that we just poured are allowed a partial cure of two hours before demolding. Now the rest of the material that we mixed up we're going to thicken with the Thyvex uh, silicone thickener. We're going to add a couple of drops, mix that in thoroughly, and then we're going to use that thickened rubber to fill any undercuts such as the eyes, uh, the vents on the top of the head, around the ear lobes, and around the chin. Uh, there's even some in the back that I was concerned about and fill those in as well. So you can see here that the silicone, once applied, doesn't move. It doesn't slump. And that's the idea behind the thickening of the material. Uh, one quick uh, visual inspection. Make sure everything is uh, covered thoroughly. Once again, we're going to allow the material a partial cure for about 60 minutes before moving on to the next step. So now that we're working on the next layer, uh, we're going to again mix some material. We're going to apply it over the entire piece. Notice I'm not adding any pigment here. I'm simply focusing on the areas that are uh, dark blue and cover those with one layer of uh, the rubber. And then again, one quick visual inspection. Make sure everything is covered. The material is now allowed a partial cure for 60 minutes before moving on to the next step. Now our next layer, you can see that I'm dispensing uh, double the amount of material. This is our thickened layer. We're going to add some Thyvex to thicken the material up. This is the meat and potatoes layer. This is where you're thickening up the entire thickness of your mold. Keep in mind that the mold thickness should be about a quarter inch to five sixteenths, definitely not more than three eighths of an inch. Keep in mind this is a uh, glove mold. We want to be able to easily peel it away. Now this layer is allowed a partial cure just like the previous for 60 minutes before moving on to the next step. Now in the meantime we can go back and demold those keys that we casted about two hours ago. You can see that the silicone is stiff enough that we can demold it. And then uh, we're going to cut that strip of silicone at a bevel. We're going to uh, cut it to create beveled keys. If you notice, the little cups um, there have a bevel as well. And these keys that we are making should have some as well. Now, to apply the keys, we're going to mix a thickened batch of the Rebound 25. You're going to use, again, some Thyvex to thicken it. And then um, before I actually apply the keys to the mold, I was a little bit worried about the sharp edges around the chin area and around the neck. And to smoothen those out a little bit, I applied a little bit of more of the thickened material in those areas so that we don't have any kind of um, mechanical locking going on with the support shell. Now once that is applied, I can move on to the keys. And you can see the thickened rubber stays in place. It doesn't slump. I'm going to simply place a key there. And to hold that heavy key in place, I'm going to use some sewing pins. Uh, these will not damage your mold, so you can put a couple of those in there. And then we're going to move around and apply the uh, rest of the keys. And then we're going to move on to the bottom as well. Once all the keys are applied, we can go around and feather out that excess silicone uh, that is around the keys. You want to flatten that out as much as possible. Once again, we're going to allow the material a partial cure for about 60 minutes before moving on to the next step. And then we can uh, go ahead and remove those pins before applying the final layer to our silicone mold. This layer does not have any of the thickener. We're basically mixing one-to-one -one of the silicone and then we're going to brush it on over the entire um, uh, mold to kind of encapsulate everything. You want to make sure that you cover those keys thoroughly. So those keys should be covered with this final layer of silicone. And now I'm going to just go around, brush on the silicone over everything, and then we're going to let this fully cure for six hours before moving on to the support shell. If you like to see the making of the support shell and casting into this mold, click on the link above. It will take you to the second half of our two-part video tutorial. If you got inspired to do some of your own mold making and casting and you would like to purchase some of these products, 
You can do so by visiting any one of our distributors around the world. Simple step-by-step -step instructions on how to make a seamless brush-on glove mold using the Rebound 25. Now, if you'd like to see how we made the support shell for this mold, check out the second half of this two-part video tutorial. Now, if you have ideas about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Now, to keep up with our latest mold making and casting videos, remember to subscribe.